Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namaste Jaste Jaste Abhilabhi Bhava Vajra Naka Vajra Dhamstra Kama Shayan Randhaya Randhaya Tamo Grasagrasa Swaha Abhayam Abhayam Atma Lipuyashta Om Shrom Vagi Shayasya Vadane Lakshmi Yasya Chavajasi Yasya Ste Hridaye Sangvit Tam Nrishingham Aham Bhajai Sri Nishim Hajai Nishim Hajai Jai Nishim Kala Adesh Hajai Padamukha Padmahi Ugram Viram Mahavishnu Jolantam Sarutamukam Nishimham Nishanam Bhadram Ritu Ritu Maham Aham Thank you for coming and inviting me. I, well, I invited myself, but <laughs> welcome me to Glorify Lord Nrishim Hadev, who has. What's the appearance place of Lord Nrishim Hadev? Ahobilam. Here. He's appeared here, isn't it? It's also his appearance place. He's appeared here. Why has he appeared here? Why does he do anything? He does what he likes to do and he does for the pleasure of his devotees. So, he has appeared here and he's very happy to accept the glorification of his devotees and he likes to see his devotees glorified. So, we are coming here to glorify Lord Narasimha Dev and Prahlad Maharaj who has glorified Lord Narasim Hadev with so many wonderful prayers. Prahlad is known as the greatest glorifier of Lord Narasim Hadev. Is that right? Is, that, is anyone praised? Has anyone glorified Has anyone glorified Narasim Hadev more than Prahlad Maharaj? No. Not that I know of. <laughs> well, Here's a, here's a typical insight from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He generally turns everything up. Whatever you think, he turns it all upside down. So he said that in the Satya Yuga, Hiranyakashipu glorified Nrsimha Dev more than Prahlad Maharaj. <laughs> and in the Treta Yuga, Ravana was... So he said that the negative method is is the, the best method <laughs> of glorification. So what does that mean? Definitely Hiranyakashipu's glorification of Nrsimhadev. We just read how oh, Ravindra Saruprabhu was reading how Hiranyakashipu was calling Nrsimhadev a rascal. And now you will die. So he wasn't a devotee. His glorification wasn't, it certainly wasn't loving glorification. And glorification should be loving to be perfect and complete. But in the sense that the Lord, he appears in this world. One of the reasons he appears is just to show people like Hiranyakashipu, which means, as Ravinda Srupa was always also saying, more or less all of us, just to. Hiranyakashipu is better at being what we all desire to be than we are. That's all. He was a successful one too. He was a success. He was a successful materialist. Greatest success in the history of the universe. So, Nrsimhadev just came to show that actually there is God, and He is God. And even if, as we also, in our God program, as I just heard this term, did you make that up, or is God that a project. No, I God that project? Somebody else. It's a, it's a some, standard some, uh, theological no. term, or what? no? I, I, it was actually some some uh, psychiatrist somewhere right? yeah. hit upon that realization okay. from his patients that yeah. <laughs> the God project going on. So. In the course of our God project, we may try to harness some other 
God as our accomplice in crime, that he will give us blessings for our sense gratification. So we, there are so many imaginations about the nature of God. Usually people are pretty vague, but they have an idea. He's someone who's there to give me blessings, to enjoy myself. And sometimes they do this. They, they, they meaning some magazine or... They, they, they go and they just ask people on the street as if everyone on the street should be an authority. Well, what do you think that God's like? And uh, the most interesting answers get published in the magazine. What do you think God is like? Now, no one's... Just by our mm, projection, we certainly wouldn't discover that God is a cowherd boy with a flute. We might think of him as sitting on a cloud throwing down thunderbolts. But that God, the supreme person, supreme powerful, comes in such an apparently nasty form. Ugra Rupa. Ugra means terrible, nasty. Apparently nasty. He comes in such a, a ferocious form we don't think like that. We think God is kind and loving. He kindly, lovingly gives me blessings to enjoy peacefully with him, as you were saying, at some distance over there. Just like when Archbishop of Canterbury, when he was asked, what, what will you do when you go to heaven? They presumed he was going to heaven. He said, I'll spend the first year, hundred years glorifying God and the rest of eternity enjoying myself. And God will be somewhere over there facil <laughs> facilitating my sense enjoyment. Get yes. the glorification out of the way first. <laughs> so, Hiranyakashipu glorified the Supreme Personality of Godhead by making what appears to us to be a very good job of actually being God. He appeared to be in control of the universe. He appeared to have everyone within his subjugation. Prahlad was the pinprick in his side that he, everyone feared him except this tiny little boy. <laughs> and he just couldn't, he couldn't get rid of him. He thought, you don't want to follow me? Okay, then you can go the way of so many other people I killed. But he couldn't kill him. And at that point, when Hiranyakashipu understood he couldn't kill Prahlad, at that point, Hiranyakashipu began to have the beginning of his transcendental realization. When he asked Prahlad, that, what is the source of your power? Then he admitted, it. practically he admitted he was defeated. What is this? So I went to so much trouble you know, doing austerities for so many years and there was smoke coming out of his ears, literally. And uh, filling up the whole universe and all the demigods were afraid and they should have been afraid and he, he got the blessings from Lord Brahma and then he went out and terrorized the, the whole universe and he got his power by, he was a self-made man. He got his power by working hard with a fixed plan and he got what he wanted, which was dominion over the whole universe. And then Prahlad frustrated him and he couldn't destroy him. And Prahlad wasn't even... As, as one, one feature of being God is that you are the benefactor of others and usually that's restricted to my my family members or my country Germans may be offended if we remind them but Hitler had a program like that he became like God for the Germans that we'll make the Germans we'll ju not that we'll make the Germans the best but we'll just show everyone how we actually are the best it was already assumed that the Germans are the best so we'll ju we have to demonstrate that now so he wanted to to share his he wanted to share out his 
dominion and share it with others, that others can also feel, yeah, that we're we're off, we're being benefited by this person. So Hiranyakashipu, he loved his son, and he wanted to bestow upon him the inheritance of the unrestricted power to terrorize others and be nasty to them and enjoy yourself to the full and Palan wasn't interested and that bugged Hiranyakashipu tremendously so he's not in he doesn't care for, he's not afraid of me he can't be compromised he, he's he's not interested in what I have to give and I can't kill him and at that point he admitted his defeat by asking Pallad Maharaj what is the source of your power? That's practically an admission of his defeat, Hiranyakashipu's defeat. That he admits that I have to ask you, I thought I had all the power, and now I have to ask you that what is the source of your power? And the answer of Prahlad made Hiranyakashipu, which was the truth, but it made Hiranyakashipu even more angry. What was his answer? The source of my power is the source of your power, is the source of all power. The difference is that I recognize it and you don't. And Hiranyakashipu, being a typical demon, or the prototype demon, you could say, the first in the universe, Adi Daitya, his brother was this one, Hiranyaksha, this Adi Varaha, the original boar clashed with Adi Daitya, the first demon. So, Hiranyakashipu still denied that there is a power greater than me. And so, Lord Narasimhadev appeared in this world to demonstrate for those who doubt that there is a power greater than them and that he is not obliged to be as you think he should be. He is God. He is as he is. He is not that, well, I, I, I don't, I, God should be like this, God should be like that. That's the, we're, we're trying to project what we should, We I could accept God if he's like that, but it's you've got it around the wrong way. It's not that I, I can accept God, I shall be kind to God, and I, he's coming, crawling on his hands and knees, asking us, please believe in me. <laughs> it's, you got it around the wrong way. He is the controller. How many times did Srila Prabhupada stress this point? We are, this is, this is the proof of God. If you want to understand intelligently, we should see that we are not the controllers. We are controlled. There is a power higher than us. Hiranyakashipu appeared to have uh, denied that principle or subdued that principle, it appeared that he was no longer the controller. But as Prahlad Maharaj pointed out, you cannot control your senses. You think that you're in control of the universe, but you have not controlled your senses. And Rushingadev appeared to show that he is the controller. He appears just as he wants, and in an unimagined form. Hiranyakashipu thought he had it all worked out. I'm not going to be killed. I cannot be killed by any man, demigod, or animal, not in the day or the night, not in, uh, not in any of the twelve months, neither in the sky or the land or the air or the water, in so many conditions. He thought, I've got it very intelligently worked out. He didn't consider, I'm taking a benediction from Lord Brahma. That By doing that in itself, he, he was admitting his inferiority. But he, he thought he had it all worked out. No one can touch me. But the Lord is always more intelligent than the greatest demon. However intelligent he may be, or however great their plans may be, they're always subject to make mistakes. And the, the Lord appeared and without uh, breaking any of 
the conditions that he ran to to fulfill the promise of his devotee. He, the one about the twelve months, by the way. How could you get around that one? Sometimes this year there's a thirteenth month, so he appeared in the thirteenth month. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he, no, 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 no. The, the months, Hiranyakashipu is also a follower of the Vedas, it, to some extent. So he he could have crea- he could have studied the Hiranyakashipu Dada or something <laughs> like this, just like we have Gorabda and Shakabda, Bangabda, and so many abdas, years, calendars. He could have done that, but then I guess that wouldn't have come within his promise. But he appeared within the 13th month. So, Rushingadev appeared in the 13th month. And, and he, he, neither on the land, the air, the water, the sky, but on the lap of Rushingadev. Neither inside nor outside, but on the veranda. It's not really inside or outside. Neither in the day or the night. But at the dusk hours, which are night, you can't really say it's day or neither night. Not by any weapon, it's not by any man made weapon, but by the nails of the Shingadev. And uh, what else? Not by any man, animal, demigod. Yeah, not by any man, animal, or demigod. Living or dead, nails are either. Oh, uh-huh, neither living nor dead, yeah. Because they, they're kind of dead, it's waste matter. At the same time, they're living, like Ramanuja's nails are still growing. Yeah, so. so, in this way, he fulfilled the promise, and in, in so many ways, he, Hiranyakashipu, he glorified the Lord in the negative method by showing, by, by, uh, Causing Nrsinghadev to appear and show unequivocally, without any doubt, that he is always the supreme. There's no way you can, no way we can avoid it. In it's not possible. There's nothing we can do. None of us, no one after Hiranyakashipu will will ever be able to perform such austerities and attain such power. But he was finished in a moment by Nrsinghadev. So it's, it's just underlining the what is stated in Shastra for those who want to accept it, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and He is always the controller and we are always controlled by Him. So we can accept that or not accept that. And if we don't accept it, then we are destroyed by Him. And he sets the conditions. It's 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 not that we just like philosophy. We can have the, we can make this philosophy and that philosophy and so many and have so many different ideas, but they don't work because the the facts are given by Bhagavan by Krishna. So shastra means a real philosopher should just try to find out what the facts are, what the truth is. But instead, we try to avoid Krishna by inventing some philosophies based on what we see, hear, feel, experience, and what we think, how we think things should be. But the the underlying point, he is the controller. We cannot defy him. We can pretend to defy him, but it won't last. It's all temporary. Therefore, an intelligent person glorifies Nrishimhadev in the manner that Prahlad glorified him. That, that Hiranyakashipu glorified Nrishimhadev in a sense more than Prahlad doesn't mean that we should try to follow the path of Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> Nrishimhadev very kindly appeared out of affection for Prahlad and we glorify Prahlad. We don't glorify Hiranyakashipu. Although 
materialistic people, they try to follow the path of Hiranyakashipu. But those who are intelligent, they hear from Shastra. They, and they accept. Intelligence means to accept. In the modern age, people think that intelligence means not to accept the descriptions of Bhagavan given in Shastra. But an intelligent person accepts. They will say, well, how, how can God appear like, how can he be like that? An intelligent person says, why not? If he's God, then we shouldn't expect him to be a, 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 a souped up version of what we are like. No, it's just, just something like us, just a little better. But, but he is extraordinary. He is beyond the imagination of, of what, beyond what we can imagine with our tiny little brains. Adbhuta shringam. It's just inconceivable. This, the, the, the Supreme Lord. Adbhuta Vamana. All of the forms of the Lord. They say, if we tell you ever go to an interfaith conference and tell them about Nishim Hadev? It's a little bit beyond them, isn't it? <laughs> if we tell that the Supreme Lord comes as a fish <laughs> or as a pig, it, it, it requires a lot of faith to accept that. But that faith is the transcendental faith, the faith of going beyond... The, the faith of of thinking that God should be what I think He should be. So devotees, that's why it's called Leela. Leela means He comes and He plays as He likes. He does extraordinary things which the devotees, they recognize. Oh, this is Bhagavan. Like when Varaha Dev appeared out of the nostril of Lord Brahma and then went up into the sky and all the demigods could understand. This must be Bhagavan. Can't be anyone else. They immediately accept it. But Hiranyaksha thought, it's just, he just said, you're just a pig, that's all. That's what he saw. That's what he called him. You're just a pig. And now you're going to die. So, difference in outlook. We hear from Shastra. It's, yeah, it's not subject for interfaith conference. They're still you know, just kind of trying to find out what's, what is the nature of God and this and that. But as Bhaktisthana Saraswati Thakur very much stressed, he was always stressing that the empiric method or the ascending method is incapable of understanding the Supreme Lord. And Hiranyakashipu was the emblem of the empiric method that we only believe what we can see. We only accept what, you, what is it within the purview of our mind and senses and intelligence. But the appearance of Lord Narasimhadev is a challenge to the atheist or the semi-theist or the supposed theist who thinks that God should be... First of all, there is no God. What, what do you think about this? Because I'm asking you because you, you, know, you move in these spheres. But the atheist of philosophy and theology and all. but to say that you don't believe in God, there must be some kind of argument that you can't believe in something that you can't conceptualize. So by saying you don't believe in God, in one sense you're saying that I, that there is God. Yeah, but what you're denying is usually imaginary too. I, I mean, there's there's a quandary about that to say I don't believe in God. Then there must, because it must somehow be, because otherwise, what is it that there is not? People talk about that, but the, the other thing that, that that they do is they say, um, if uh, only meaningful st statements are those to which some kind of uh, sense perception is uh, uh -huh. can falsify it, and sense statements about God or the soul are not falsifiable by mm -hmm. sense perception, that therefore. They're meaningless. They're cognitively meaningless. So that mm. to say there is a God is meaningless. To say there is no God is also meaningless. Any discourse of God one way That's or right. It's that's just the a, heaviest one. Yeah. <laughs> that's logical positivism. You know, that's just <laughs> like <laughs> but uh, then the question will come. Then God is defined as the supreme being. 
then if if there's why why should you even think that there should be any such thing as a supreme being? Why does that thought come again and again and again? Anyway, the philosophers they'll go on discussing, and Rishingadev will go on ripping out the intestines of Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> That's extreme. That that it's Srila Prabhupada in the purport there that you were reading. He talks about the the pleasing a form of the Lord and the and the fearsome form. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not it's not this form of Nishinga Dev is pleasing to the devotees, but yeah. the the pleasing when we think of the pleasing form of the Lord, we think especially of Krishna playing his flute. Mm-hmm. And this form of the Lord was fearsome even to Lakshmi and Brahma and, and all the demigods. Fearsome. There's a kind of pleasure there. But it's I mean, when you hear about the blood spattered, all this, there's this graphic description in the verse. Read this one: the blood, bloody mane and the intestine. I mean, that sounds really gross, doesn't it? To rip someone's intestines out and and put them around your neck as a sign of victory. Isn't it? So, well, that's what fighters do. They're there, that that kshatriya above, like Bhim saying, he vowed to. Drink the blood of Dushash and I'll rip out his heart and drink his blood. And, and he did. He ripped out his heart on the battlefield and was laughing. And, uh, even all the even all the Kshatriyas were shocked. Uh, and how this ext- God's an extreme person. <laughs> he's he's not you know that you know oh, just okay everything's okay. That's another thing he came to show. That everything's not okay. <laughs> there is right and there is wrong. And Hiranyakashipu didn't even get a trial. <laughs> he didn't get, you know, he didn't couldn't plead that, you know, when I was little, my mother didn't love me. And <laughs> no chance. No chance. Instant justice. There's right and there's wrong. And in this world, you can plead this way and that way, and. You can make this philosophy and that philosophy, but there is the laws of nature are there. They're given by Bhagawan, and you can follow them. And if you follow them, all very good. And if you don't, then yashastra vidhi mutsraja vartate kama karatata nasa siddhim avapnoti nasu kamna parangatim. Krishna warns in Bhagavad Gita that the laws are there. They're given in Shastra. And if you don't follow them, you want to just act whimsically. Then you don't get any happiness. You don't get nasu kam navi. You don't attain perfection. Hiranyakashipu thought, "I'm perfect." He's the typical materialist. Ishvara hamaham bhogi. The materialistic person thinks, "I am the controller and I am the enjoyer." And Hiranyakashipu was the greatest materialist in history. It's, there's, there's never has been and never will be again. At least not not this time round, not in this day of Brahma. Any materialist of the category of Hiranyakashipu, he really he did it. Ishvara Hamahambogi, he could say, no one could challenge that he is the controller and he is the enjoyer. Anyone challenged and off with their head, dead. But it was shown to be futile. Just Nushingadev came and showed that he appeared that Hiranyakashipu appeared to have refuted the Shastric descriptions of reality that there is the Supreme Lord he is in control and no one can defy him he appeared to have refuted that just like in the modern age by scientific progress people want to show there is no need of God what do we need? We, we have science and we have advancement. And we'll, uh, in future, we'll, we'll stop death and old age and wrinkles and everything will be perfect. They, apparently, it seems that there's no need for God. So for some time, it's described in, the, in Bhagavatam here that as just like Nushimhadev for some t- he let Hiranya he captured him and let him go just like a cat 
captures a mouse and lets it go. Have you ever seen that? Cat captures a mouse and plays with it, and the mouse says, now I'm dead. And the cat's just enjoying. It's a nasty enjoyment. Just enjoying, torturing, psychologically torturing the mouse. Mouse abuse. <laughs> and then lets it go, and the mouse looks right, looks back at the cat and Maybe it makes it taste better. If you don't it. That's what they used to beat pigs when they were alive before they killed them. Now they're not allowed to do that because it makes it softer. I learned that in history class. Something useful I learned at school. So, useful. Anyway, I mean, I didn't want to do it. But. So they let them, and the mouse, now I'm free, and he thinks I'm free and just wandered, you know, runs off on three legs which are still working and gets quite some distance away. And the cat just comes back and <laughs> captures it again. So like that, Nrishimha Dev let Hiranga Kashipu go and he thought, now, I, yeah, now I'm free. And again he can abuse Nrishimha Dev, but ultimately there's no escape. So Nrishimha Dev is very nasty, it appears, isn't it? Very nasty, it appears. But ultimately not. The, the Christians, at least in India, they, they, uh, they blame that your, our God is the Prince of Peace and yours is always killing people. <laughs> and that's true. He's always, he's always killing. Not only, not only Ravana and Hiranyakashipu and Dantavakra, but everyone. <laughs> Everyone, directly or indirectly, it's just good fortune. But ultimately, not. The, the Christians, at least in India, they they uh, they blame that your our God is the Prince of Peace, and yours is always killing people. And that's true. He's always he's always killing. Not only. Not only Ravana and Hiranyakashipu and Dantavakra, but everyone. <laughs> everyone, directly or indirectly. It's just good fortune if you happen to be killed personally. Although you have to be highly qualified to get that. You have to be a highly qualified demon to, to be personally killed by the Lord. It's not a recommended process. Again, you know, we recommend following the process of Prahlad Maharaj. So, he does kill everyone, but that killing is also his kindness, to understand that everything he does is kindness. And actually, we are not, he's not killing, but we, we, ourselves, we are killing ourselves. We have subjected ourselves to a situation in which we have to die. It's our own fault. That's again, they, they, they want to blame God. Why is there so much suffering in the world? If there's God, either He's, either he's not all-powerful, because if He was all-powerful, He should have stopped all the suffering, or He's not all-loving. So He must be all-loving, but not really in control. That's one theory. But... Lord Krishna teaches in Bhagavad Gita. No, it's not my fault, it's your fault. Purusha sukadukhanam bhuktridve hituruchute. You make, everyone makes their own fate. And he sets up the framework within which you can enjoy or suffer. And out of his kindness, when the, when the demons get too... They, they put the universal framework, the universal order too much out of control. He comes back and sets it up. That is his kindness. And those who are personally killed by him, that is a great fortune. Diti, when she, she understood, I've done a wrong act in pushing my husband to cohabit with me at this wrong time, then probably I'm going to get some very bad offspring. And Kashyap said, yeah, they're going to be terrible. They're going to be, they're going to be torturing the whole universe and killing Brahmins and killing cows. But 
they will both be killed by the hand of law. And she was very pleased to hear that. That's good. That's very. That's good. It is, they'll be. That's. But if she's if they, if they're killed by him, by the supreme lord, that's good. But if if they if they're killed by the wrath of the brahmanas, that's that's very bad. So she was understanding that principle. So the appearance of the Lord is to pritranaya sadhunam vinashayata dushkritam dharma samsthapanataya sambhavami yuga yuga. Ultimately, he, he fulfills so many purposes, but ultimately to give pleasure to his devotees. And therefore, one name that we sing every day is, he gives pleasure to Prahlad. What's that name? Prahlad Ahlada Dain. Dain. He gives, who is giving pleasure to Prahlad? Now, who gave that name Prahlad? That was given by Hiranyakashipu. Prahlad. Great pleasure. So, Hiranyakashipu was thinking, I'm enjoying and I'll share my enjoyment with my son. But Prahlad, had, he was really Prahlad because he knew that happiness is at the lotus feet of Krishna. So the Lord came for so many reasons and he's come here. What his reasons are? Well, you are all the reasons. He came for the pleasure of Prahlad. He's come for the pleasure of all of his devotees. He's very kind. He, he killed big, big demons like Hiranyakashipu and he appeared for the pleasure of Prahlad. But he appears for... We may not be as big devotees as Prahlad, but he appears for the pleasure of all his devotees. He appears in various places. This decoration, when I came in yesterday, I saw all the, all the leaves and Look, it reminded of a hobilum. Who's been to a hobilum? It's jungle, complete jungle. I went a long time ago. Probably it's got shopping malls by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's like Vrindavan, you know. It's like go, the whole of Govardhan's become all real estate and the pericama around Vrindavan. It used to be a country path, and now it's all, you know, it's all duplexes and. They're building a shopping mall in Vrindavan. How about that? <laughs> Behind the Ranganath Mandir. Go quick. <coughs> Wanna get some dust of Vrindavan? It's all gonna be under the under the tarmac, so there won't be any left. So a hobilum is a completely jungle area. Still still, still like that. And then this temple is named after Simhachalam. It's another Famous in 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 India generally, in, in most of the famous temples are, of Nrsinghar are, are in Andhra Pradesh. Who's from Andhra? Who's here? Some Telugu garus. <laughs> so. Then uh, Yadgiri Guta is there, close to Hyderabad. There are quite a lot in in. Uh, there's one I went to, a temple of Yoga Nrsimha, not very well known, just close to the Tamil Nadu border, south of Sulura Peta, facing out to the sea, and because that's apparently a very dangerous area for the ships. And then Nrsimhadev came, and then the, the idea is the ships, when they go past, they're supposed to salute Nrsimhadev, then they have no problem, I was told when I went there. Recently I went to one temple, what's the name of that place? Bitter, is it? West, Bidar, Bidar, just west of Hyderabad in Karnataka. You went there? You saw Nishinga Temple? Yeah, you have to go in in a cave and the water comes up to here. Apparently it used to come right up to here. You have to wade through the water. You have to wade through the water, yeah. And they, they, they pumped out quite a lot of the water because it's it was too difficult to go. It would have been more fun if they kept it. Was it built that way? Underwater? It was built that way by Lord Nishimhadev. That's what they say. That when he came, after killing Hiranyakashipu, he stopped there and with his nails, he <coughs> made a cave and went and relaxed inside the cave. And he's still there. He stopped off in a lot of places. 
Yeah, he stopped off in a lot of places. <laughs> One of the most, or well, maybe the, definitely the most important place of which is Navadvita Dham. Yeah. He's there also in Navadvita Dham. And our Acharyas have worshipped him, Bhaktivinoda Thako worshipped him at uh, Godrum and at the Jog Peet, Rishimhadev, and in Mayapur, Rishimhadev is worshipped there. And recently, Srila Prabhupada's godbrother also in Mayapur established, and Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj established Rishimhadev in his temple in, in Mayapur. So Rishimhadev is... Mm. Then uh, other Nish- in Vrindavan, there's Rishimha temple. In Kathmandu, I'm just trying to think of the places where I've had darshan. Any, anyone else took darshan? Uh, so now there are so many devotees worshipping all over the world. In Jaipur, yeah, I was saying in Jaipur. In, in Mysore. So I never went to Mysore all these years. I never went for some reason. Simhachala, I said, yeah. That's uh, Lakshmi Varaha Nishinga. Varaha Nishinga in a, in a joint form. He's so hot that he's covered in chandan 364 days a year. They keep him under chandan. He's very hot. So, uh, one day a year on Chandan Yatra. It looks like a Shiva Linga. You can't see the form of the Lord. He's, he's completely covered by, in a big pile of Chandan. And they break once a year and lakhs of people come and take darshan. And then again, he's like that. So, Rishingma Dev is worshipped by the Gorya Vaishnavas also. Not only all Vaishnavas will worship Rishingma Dev, but in Gorya worship, he's also, we see Bhaktivinoda Thakur was very big. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, generally we, we think that in Rishingha Dev, yeah, he will, just like the demons, like the demon-like desires for enjoyment in this material world, we pray to Rishingha Dev to, to uh, destroy those desires, the Hiranyakashipu within us. We pray to him to destroy those desires without which we cannot attain bhakti. We cannot attain Krishna. But also, Bhakti Nautako also states, I believe it's in Navadin Dhamma. What is that? Which one? One of those two books. But, uh, he states that Lord Narsimhadev, he also awards love of Krishna. He also awards Krishna Prem. Yeah, that's in Bhakti Nautakur's. Yeah, story. which what, what? Yeah. But he he also he prays to Lord Nishingadev, please, you can give us love of Krishna. So it's a very happy day for the followers of Prahlad and the the those who are followers of Hiranyakashipu they have forgotten this. They don't they don't think of Nishingadev. They just pretend he doesn't exist. Like Hiranyakashipu closed his eyes when Nushinga did. He saw him, he closed his eyes. If you close your eyes, you can pretend he's not there, but he is. So, their day is coming. They'll also see Nushinga Dev. They're all there thinking, we shall enjoy separately. We don't need any God. I'm God. We shall, by our own endeavors, we shall make a perfect world without God. So they want to forget him, but he doesn't forget them. <laughs> he doesn't forget Prahlad and he doesn't forget Hiranyakashi. He doesn't forget anyone. So he's very kind, but he doesn't like this rascaldom. So when he gets too much, then he personally comes, and otherwise he comes in the form of global warming, if there is such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's that called? That tsunami. <laughs> Earthquakes, you think all these things only happen in uncivilized countries like <laughs> India. But you had flooding here, we had flooding here a few years ago in North Germany, that was. Not in South Germany, it's more civilized. Yeah. It, it'll come, everything's coming. In any way, birth, death, old age, and disease, it's there all the time. You don't want to see God? See here. See birth, death, and that you also, you try to send the old people away to some home where you can't see them urinating as they're walking because they can't control and looking so ugly and we only like to see the pretty people and we don't like to see we only see the BMWs and the Mercedes and we don't 
We don't have old cars, we only have new cars. And in Japan it's considered like socially reprehensible to have an old beaten up car. The only old beaten up car you'll see in Japan is the ISKCON one. <laughs> everything should be clean and neat and tidy and opulent. And Nishingadev comes. Either you accept directly or we have to accept some other way. So devotees are very intelligent and they accept. Yes, there is Nishingadev. How can you believe that? How can you believe that God comes like, like this and rips people's intestines? Well, not everyone, only Hiranyakashi rips his intestines out. It's an act of faith that he's, if he's God, then he should be able to do. And so many great people before me, they've accepted persons who, I may not know all the philosophical ins and outs, but they certainly have established and they've shown by their, by their behavior and, and by their practical activities of complete detachment from material enjoyment and complete attachment to that person who they say exists. So why shouldn't we accept? It's an act of faith. You, are, you believe in the path of Hiranyakashipu or you believe in the path of Prahlad and Prabhupada who, who told us the, the truth which we could perceive that this material world is miserable and even if you become as opulent as Hiranyakashipu, you'll still be miserable. They very clearly pointed this out and they very clearly had no taste for that sense gratification and they very clearly had absorption in something which we can't perceive <coughs> but through them we do. So... That's our faith, and Ravindra Sarup Prabhu can present that in a much more ordered manner, but that's necessary. And on these days, we on these festival, other days we'll be discussing with people, philosophizing this day also, but in, on, on these days, uh, we'll take our simple faith and bow down before. Nushim Hadev and pray for the mercy of Prahlad Maharaj. Jai Nushim Hadev. Jai Prahlad Maharaj. And Jai Hiranyakashipu too. Because he is Jai. He is Jai. Jai and Vijay. Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha. It's no ordinary thing to become here. He's also a great person. He got a lot of mention in the Shastra. So he's a great person. We can, re we can remember also that he is Jai. And that by remembering, by remembering Hiranyakashipu, we automatically, of course we try to remember Nishimhadev, but He's so much glorified that we can't think of Nishimhadev without thinking of Hiranyakashipu. So he's also a great person. But still we'll, we'll worship Prahlad and not Hiranyakashipu. Hare Krishna. Sri Nishimhadev Bhagavan Ki Prahlad Maharaj Ki All glories to Srila Prabhupada who introduced us to all of this of which we definitely never have any idea whatsoever that the Lord is coming and tearing out the intestines and blood, half man, <laughs> half lion. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> so the Abhi is supposed to begin in 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. So, all glories to the Pujaris. Festival means Pujaris uh, pretty much 24 hours, for days on end, if it's an extended festival.